Hey there! In this video, we'll talk about dependency injection from the ABP framework. ABP's dependency injection system is developed on top of Microsoft's dependency injection extension library, so its documentation is valid in ABP as well. Since ABP is a modular framework, every module defines its own services and registers them via dependency injection in its own separate module class. ABP also introduces conventional service registration. You don't need to do anything to register a service by convention. It's automatically done. And if you want to disable it, you can set the skip auto service registration to true in the constructor of your module class. And once you turn off auto registration, you should of course manually register your services. And you'll use the add assembly of extension method to register all your services by convention. ABP registers some specific types to dependency injection by default. Module classes are registered as singleton. Controllers, models, and view components, application services, repositories, and domain services are all registered as transient. Blog post app service derives the application service base class and therefore it is automatically registered with a transient lifetime. There are also dependency interfaces. If you implement one of these interfaces, your class is registered to dependency injection automatically. Another way is the dependency attribute. And it's got the following properties. Lifetime to determine the lifetime of the registration. Try register to try and register the service only if it's not registered before. And the replace services to replace the services that are already registered. Or you could use the iServiceCollectionReplace method of the Microsoft Dependency Injection Library. And the dependency attribute has a higher priority than other dependency interfaces, if it defines the lifetime property. The exposed services is another attribute that is used to control which services are provided by the related class. For example, right here, the tax calculator class only exposes the iTax calculator interface. So you can only inject the iTax calculator, but not inject the tax calculator or the iCalculator in your application. However, it's got two more properties, include defaults and include self, which are both booleans. The include defaults is to expose the default interfaces that are determined by convention whereas the include self is to expose the class itself. So for our example right here, the iCalculator and the iTax calculator, and even the generic iCalculator interface is also considered a default interface. But the iCanCalculate is not, since the naming convention is not satisfied. In some cases, you may need to register a service to the iService collection manually, and you can directly add your services according to Microsoft documentation. So we have registered our services. How do we inject them? The most common way is of course the constructor injection, where the class clearly cannot be constructed unless all constructor injected dependencies are provided. There is also property injection, which is not supported by the Microsoft dependency injection library. And to make that possible, ABP can integrate with third-party dependency injection providers. And AutoFAC is already integrated with all the ABP startup templates. Now, for property injection dependencies, make sure that you declare a public property with a public setter. This allows the dependency injection framework to set it after creating your class. You could also use the disable property injection attribute to disable a property injection on either the class level or the property level. You can resolve a service directly from the iService provider, for example, just inject the interface and use the get service or the get required service method. And for multiple implementations, you can register multiple implementations of the same service interface, register both of them, and then try to inject this interface. The last registered implementation will be used. It is not suggested to use the dependency interfaces to register multiple implementations. ABP provides two special services to optimize the way the iService provider resolves the services. It introduces the iCached service provider and the iTransient cached service provider. They both inherit the iService provider interface and internally cache the resolved services. 
So even if you resolve a service multiple times, you'll still get the same service instance. And we'll see that in the code part, and you can also read more about it in the documentation. So we're using the sample Mongo app that we've used in previous videos. And everything we'll do in this video is going to be in the application layer. And first off, we're starting with the module class of the application layer. We're using the skip auto service registration, and so we'll register our services manually, not automatically. And so we're using the add assembly method of the module class, so we can manually register our services by convention. And then we're registering two implementations with the same service interface, the some specific manager and the other manager, and both are transient. If we see right here, We've declared these interfaces and declaration is enough for this video. Our sole aim in this video is to test service registration and service injection. And if you see the two implementations that we've got right here, the some specific manager and the other manager. If we see the some specific manager class that implements the iTransient dependency in all of these interfaces as well, we're using the dependency attribute with the service lifetime of scoped. And so this attribute is going to have a higher priority than the interface. So it's this service is going to be scoped, not transient. The auto registration by convention also works. And so these interfaces in line eight are auto registered by what? By convention. If we take a look at the suffix right here, the manager goes all the way back. The first few letters right here, civic, which are right here, and then the I, these satisfy the convention. And so this one will be auto registered by convention. Same goes with this one, suffix, and then the I. Same goes also with this one, suffix, and then specific. And also this one as well. As for the I multi-manager, it is manually registered right here. But these ones are not registered. Why? Because we haven't registered them manually, and also they do not satisfy the name convention. And let us not also forget our more properties right here, the replace service and the try register. As for this one, the other manager, we're using the exposed service attribute of type I some specific manager, which is this one. So we have registered this one with the exposed service attribute. This one's also manual registered. And the I other manager is not registered because the include default is false. The properties that we've got right here, the include defaults and the include self. So as long as it is false, then this one is not going to be registered. And as for the injection, we are in the sample app service class. We've injected the manager through property injection. As you can see, it is public with a public setter. And we've used constructor injection with the some specific manager right here. However, the I specific manager, we are resolving it using the lazy service provider, which is coming from the sample Mongo app, which is also coming from the application service base class, which acts like the I transient cache service provider. And we can change it to this. As you can see, I've injected the I transient cache service provider right here and in through the constructor. And then I've used it to resolve the I specific manager service. But for code simplicity and for testing purposes, and since the lazy service provider is coming directly from the application service base class, I'm going to keep it this way for code simplicity. And in the manager tests in the application.tests project, after injecting our services, we just want to see if they're actually injected or not. And so we're checking if they're not null. Let's run this one and see. And as you can see, it is passing. And in the second test, if we get the required service of the I some specific manager, then it shouldn't be null, it should be injected. But as for the I other manager and the other manager, which are these right here, then if you remember our properties, the include details is off and the include self is also off. So include self refers to the class itself, the other manager, and the include default is for the interface. And so it is not registered neither for the interface nor for the class itself, because they're both false. So it should throw the component not registered exception for both of them. And let's see. And it is passing. And as for the next test, we'll first get the required service of the I multi manager, and then we'll get the I enumerable of it. The count should be two, because we've got two implementations for the same service. So the count of them should be two. 
However, the type of the last one should be the last registered one, which is the other manager. And so it should be the other manager. Let's test it and see. And as you can see, it is also passing. And as for the last test, we're getting the I specific manager twice, once with the lazy service provider and once with Microsoft's get required service method, which is coming from Microsoft itself. And for the first one, even though it is transient and we get it the first time with the specific manager itself and the second time with the I specific manager, the resolved service will be cached. And so the reference equals going to be the same. They're going to be the same instance. That's what we're testing. We're checking to see if it's going to cache the resolved services or not. But Microsoft's method does not cache the resolved services. And so the first one and the second one will be different instances. And that's what we're testing right here and let us debug. I'm going to let it continue and pay close attention right here. Since it's a lazy service provider right here, the count is one and we haven't called it yet. You see, we're still outside. Let's get in and get out and then take a look at the count. Now it's two since we've called it. If we didn't need it, it was not going to get resolved. These two are already injected, but this one only got injected after we called it after we got in and then got out. I'm going to let it continue. Let it continue again. And you see it's got into the case of the same instance. And as you can see right here, the cache services count is two. I'm going to let it continue. And you see in the second one, it went into the L statement, different instances. This has been the dependency injection video of the ABP framework. Please refer back to the documentation for all the other topics that we could not cover in this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.